Chapter 2. Hell's Angel. During this time, my mother, who was a Catholic, had been through a kind of weird religious experience. She'd always gone to church, but I didn't quite understand what this new thing was. Whenever I phoned her up, she'd tell me that she'd experienced the power of God. It was all very odd. Then started all the talk about Jesus and how he could set me free from the prison that I was living in. I thought she was utterly crazy. The idea of going down to St Alfonso's parish church as a drug addict just seems so surreal. My memories of the church I'd left at the age of 15 was boring and totally hypocritical. God, if he existed at all, and I thought he did in a superstitious kind of way, was utterly irrelevant. He was out there somewhere, but what had he done for me? My mother kept telling me that Jesus is alive and wanting a relationship with me and I thought she must be doing LSD too. Every time I'd go home to borrow money or have some food, she'd give me yet another Christian book. One wet day I'd run out of dope and had nothing to do. Out of boredom I'd just grabbed one of these books. I was attracted to the front cover which had a flick knife on it, like the one I carried everywhere in my drug-induced paranoia. It was a book called Run Baby Run, by an American gangster named Nicky Cruz. I began to read and, to my amazement, actually enjoyed it. This was a true story of New York street gangs. I love New York. That's where my music was coming from. These guys were into some heavy stuff. They were doing harder drugs than me, were more violent and into much more crime. In the middle of them all came a skinny preacher called David Wilkerson, saying Jesus can set you free. The gangsters were going to cut him up into pieces and throw him into the Hudson River, which is kind of what you do out there. Shaking with fear, he said, you can kill me, but God's love is going to get you. Amazingly, one by one, these hard men became religious. It started with the gang leader who experienced a powerful conversion, which set him free from drugs and gave him a fresh start in life. As I read on, hope began to tingle somewhere deep inside of me. Maybe there is a God. Maybe there is a way out of this torturous life that I'm trapped in. I got to the end of the book, but then realised where I was. That's New York, and nothing like that ever happens in East Finchley. I put the book down and thought little more of it.